So I'm going to talk about one thing today for us, which I think is super important, of really how do you make sure that you adapt yourself to the market change. But at the same time, I want you guys to be aware, hey, look, we just had halfway point. It's time to reflect back a little bit and say, hey, how did I do last, last quarter? How am I doing this first half of the year? And if I'm not really living up to my potential, what do I need to do to change for that? Hey, this is Blake Sloan. I've been selling real estate over 14 years. Our team of highly trained professionals along with our unmatched marketing has sold thousands of homes here in the Myrtle Beach area. And this is how we do it. We just hit the halfway point. So right now, halfway point in the year means already we're through two quarters, the entire half of the year is gone. It doesn't feel like it's even started hardly, right? I definitely feel like we're still in first quarter. We just passed through second quarter. So ultimately, it's kind of a time to, to really look back and reflect a little bit, but sometimes that intentional self-reflection is what leads to consistent momentum. What do you think that means? Intelligent self-reflection or intentional self-reflection leads to consistent momentum. What does that mean? I gotta make sure I'm doing the right things in the right order to allow me to get the results I want. And so part of what you want to do at the halfway point is make some adjustments. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but I want to hit one, two, th one thing really important because we're, it's not a usual halfway point. Why? The market, the market is changing. So not only is your life changing, who you are changing, what you have going on changing, the market's also changing, which is really a wild card for anyone to understand. So I can't do the normal things I do every year, which is every quarter I switch and I can use the same goals and the same things. That's not going to work. Why? Everything's shifting, the market's changing, right? So I gotta make sure that I'm able to, to make that adjustment. And so I'm gonna give you guys you know, something that we really studied. I've been putting a lot of time in this lately to say, okay, what adjustments do we have to make? If you notice the past three or four weeks, you're training on different aspects of how to do what? How to help win in the market shift, okay? And so effective and efficient action times velocity equals momentum. What does that mean there, you think? Am I doing the right things? Am I doing them efficiently? Because there's a difference between being busy and being effective, and I think it's always a good reminder, especially when you have a, a point in, in the year where you look back and say, okay, let's evaluate what I've been doing the past six months, halfway through the year, how's my year stacking up, and really am I effective and efficient in what I'm doing and how I'm operating? I wanna break down, I think, what's most important. This is something I created. This is not like a copy from anybody else or anything, this part. But I look back and say, what's really got to, to happen in the next part of this year for us to dominate as an agent? And really, more importantly, how do you make adjustments as an agent in the market to make sure that you can continue to win? But what I'm noticing is a lot of people keep doing the same things they were doing. And so it's very, very important to me to evaluate, okay, what have I been doing and what do I need to change to make sure I'm effective and efficient so I can do that this second half of the year in this new market, this new world that we're operating in. And this is true if you're inside sales. On the buyer seller side, on the listing side, buyer side, whatever it is, there's got to be some ad adaptation so that you can win on this. So the first most important part I think that we really got to work on as agents here it has to do with skills. I have to do something that they call skill up. What does that mean, you think? Not just train, but what? I have to find a way to level up the skill set I have. So my mindset's how I operate mentally. My skill set's how good am I at doing what I do? And I've got to get much better at doing what I do. And the first part we talked about this, I think is really important. It's got to be the first part, it's got to be scripts. What does that mean you think? The scripts part, the scripts aspect. Okay, what type? Yep, but there's got to be a new way to understand scripts at a high level. Explain of the market. Yes. Here's what the problem is. Before, like I mentioned, everyone had a tailwind. Everybody's going in a certain way, certain direction. Everybody knows what a tailwind is. What is that? What is a tailwind? If you're flying an airplane or anything else, if the, the air is going a certain direction, it usually goes from west to east, I believe. At least it's always seen faster when they do that. But it's easier to fly. When I'm flying into a headwind, it means it's harder for me to get there in that scenario. So we've switched from a buyer frenzy, aka a tailwind, to now a headwind where there's a little more hesitation, right? A little bit more fear, more just holding back. And so I have to get better at being able to articulate here the reality of the market overall and do what? Help influence them to make better decisions, 
Why is it a good idea for them to buy right now? Hey, look, I understand the market's got a little bit, you know, craziness to it. Rates are up. But if you look at the overall, you know, time period of, of market cycles, it's still a great investment long term. People that are scared because the stock market crashed 20 something percent and they can't use that money anymore. This is where scripts come in very, very handy to get very good at these small word tracks that you can use so you can influence them to really do what you need to do. Does that make sense, you guys? So as, as this market changes, we got to get very good at these, these word scripts or word tracks to help us adapt. And it's not like the buyer script or that one. It's going to be more things like, hey, look, here's why you need to buy still. Here's why you still need to put your house in the market. Here's why it's a good idea to go ahead and get the evaluation of what your home's worth so we're able to get you on the market and help them do it. And the point of the reason I bring this up, it's more difficult than ever as rates continue to go up and buyers have more hesitation. The good news is I can jump into my passing lane by getting very, very good at scripts and that piece of it. That makes sense? Second piece, I think somebody said this a minute ago, which is super important, is got to be the market knowledge. I've got to be very, very good at the market knowledge. What does that mean, you think? They got to know that you know what you're talking about, right? So not just you got to understand what you're talking about. You have to know, hey, look, here's what's going on. And actually, that's not necessarily the scenario. You see, here's what our local market is doing here. And you're able to do that with actual data because that data is going to position you as an expert to them in their mind. Can't tell you how many times, once I started the radio show a lot, people used to always ask how the market was. Most people say what? What most people say when you ask an agent what the, how the market is? It's great, right? Nothing specific. And so the market was really good. Well, actually, yeah, it was up 15% last month. The good news is prices were up 20% last month. All of a sudden, once you had very specific numbers, AK detailed market knowledge, guess what happened? They wanted to follow you more. It was very, very... Uh, helpful for them to connect with you because they know you're the expert just by knowing the data. And so as the market's shifting, right, and all of a sudden it went from sales being up to sales being down, the more knowledge I have, the more know-how I have, they're going to trust me more to help do what? Guide. Guide them and make a scary decision in what's going on in their life. They know they need to buy, they know they need to, to downgrade or upgrade or buy something here, but there's hesitation because there's uncertainty in the future, if I can help relieve that fear of them by having really good scripts and be able to articulate why it's important for them to buy right now and be able to use and justify the market knowledge of, hey, look, you know, the reality is it's not going to crash necessarily because we still have a 5 million unit housing shortage here. We're still in a very, very low inventory market right now with our inventory being about 1.3 months of inventory. Typically, a seller's market's anything less than six months of inventory. Right, so you can go through and articulate this data to them to help them have what ease of fear and shift that worldview and self view by doing these two things here. Does that make sense? And so in a shifting market, that means I probably need to take a little more time to study and look at what? Market data, not just national data or something you see on a major blog, local data so I know exactly what's going on all the time. Third piece of this, which is very, very important. I must get very, very, very good at storytelling. Storytelling. What does that mean there? Third party stories. Yes, why? Because they did it. They people connect to them the most. The absolute best leaders, the absolute best influencers, salespeople, they're very, very, very good at telling stories. Why? They follow the loop in the mind. It's how the mind sees things and sees pictures. And so as I'm telling the story, guess what they're doing? visualizing the people and also who themselves in that scenario how can i level up my skills and skill up here on my empty piece of understanding and letting people know that i understand what they're going through i mean i truly understand you right and guess what i understand what you're going through right now you're in a situation where you need to you know move down whatever their, their situation is but at the same time you're filled with fear because there's uncertainty in the marketplace going forward so I just want you guys to know, understand what you're going through. I understand how fearful it is and how scary it is and that I'm here to guide you through this process that you make the best possible decision to set you guys up for life, whatever it is. So make sure you have that ability to have that conversation. And here's the thing. What's the first step to empathy? You got to actually care about people. You got to pause enough and it's not about a commission check. It's not about selling anything. It's about how can I connect these people and how can I truly help them? And then money is only the byproduct of me actually serving people. If you, if you learn that, understand that, it's hard for some people. Some people are super selfish, right? They don't care about money. It's not going to help you in sales, especially at a high level. 
I slow down and care about people and have empathy, the back end reward is very valuable in terms of, hey, look, here's when the deals that start showing up. Very, very, very important piece in that scenario. Right? Part one there. Second piece, we must have, this is something I've noticed a lot right now, especially as buyers are fearful, and there's also less buyers in the marketplace. Second piece here, you have to have a lot of tenacity. What does that mean, you think? Tenacity piece, what does that mean, you think? Bouncing back from adversity. Yep, what else? You just gotta have a much more intensity, I guess you say, in terms of that, right? I think to be able to bounce back, whatever it is, maybe intensity would also be a word on that. Uh, I'm gonna put that in there too, intensity. One of the biggest things I'm noticing right now with clients, especially people I've heard responses from, or even somebody who's bought from somebody else who was a client of ours and who was somebody in our bucket, right? Number one thing I'm seeing right now is speed response. What does that mean? Speed response. Do I call back? Do I help back? Do I, how quickly do I respond to them? How quickly do I respond to the text message, the email? Do I take a couple days? Do I wait till after the weekend? Right? Am I follow back up with them if I had a question? If they have questions about things, can I help them get the answers they want? And if I do get the answers I want, how long does it take me to get back? I had an agent I talked to this week who had made an offer on our stuff. Buyer had basically been in our system before too. I say, man, uh, what's going on with this buyer? He said, well, they said that they had called your office, they couldn't get an answer they want, never heard anything back, so they called me. Somebody. They want somebody else. So if we were doing our job and had speed response and had the tenacity here and pushing back with them and getting them what they want in a way they felt like I was doing it and not just they were some secondhand person, right? Would they have probably say to me? Yeah. And so when the market's heightened and there's more intensity and there's more fear, it happens much faster for them, and so it's that much more important for us to have that speed response. So there's 25% less buyers in the market. My speed response matters more. Why? There's not 25% less agents. There's 25% less buyers, same amount of agents. My speed response matters, and if I don't get that answer for them or respond back to them, they're going to go to somebody else. And so it's very important for me to level this up going forward and make the proper adjustments in how I'm doing it. Does that make sense? Very important. Second piece of this, I guess this should probably have been intensity, but these two will go together. So it can be intensity or tenacity. Right here. Second piece here, consistency and follow up. It has to be real consistency and follow up. What do you think that means here? Why is that in there? I want you to take some time and get real and say, look, how, how realistic and how good is the consistency of my follow-up? I know we have a lot of holes in it, period. But we have tons of holes on the, on the follow-up side and the seller side. We call them once or twice and we can don't call them for another 19 days and can't figure out why they list somebody else. Right? Same thing in terms of the buyer side. You watch notes in Boomtown. It's very inconsistent. They're just call log, call log, call log, no notes. Right? Don't even know if the call is actually real or not. And then all of a sudden, a month later, they respond to something they end up buying with somebody else. Am I truly very tenacious in my follow-up with my people in my bucket? Am I really going at them hard very consistently? There's an art to that because when there's more competition. They're going to usually go the one who follows up the most consistent. Now, if I'm calling and not leaving voicemails and I'm not sending text messages, do they know I'm calling? No. So I've got to do what? Go the extra mile. A lot of people just, if I still in the dialer and call some people, then I'm actually getting something, but you're not because it's much more competitive right now with a smaller pool of buyers. And so I've got to be very, very consistent, meaning I actually call my people. If I log a call, it's a real call. If it's somebody in my bucket, I leave the voicemail, I'll send a text message. Right? Very, very important for me to make sure I'm having that consistency across the board because the third or fourth or fifth time of me calling, leaving a voicemail, showing I care, sending a text message, sending an email, they're probably going to feel a lot more likely through the law of reciprocity to want to use me. Why is that? Because no one else is as consistent as me in the follow-up. Third piece, must be multi-channel. What does that mean, multi-channel? What are we noticing about phone calls lately? 
Less people answer the phones lately. More and more and more. Why? Because people are abusing the robots. They're abusing the auto dialers. They're abusing computers that call. It isn't even a person. And so I have to be multi-channel on this to, number one, make sure that they're understanding that I'm calling following up and I'm separating myself from the pack. That's done through what? Phone call. What else? Text messages. What else? Email. email. What else? Video email. Very important. Video email is probably one of the most underutilized tools that we have just because I watch and see who does it and not many do. Why? Why do you think they don't? It's extra work, right? It's the extra mile. It's much easier to mindlessly dial on a dialer and hope I get a few people versus taking time to send a one-to-one -one video that they're going to connect with much higher. But if you look at the one-to-one -one video and someone who's my bucket who I know has been looking, it's very, very efficient because it shows them I care and no one else is taking the time to do what? Send a one-to-one -one video. Right? I've got a one-to-one -one video almost like a handwritten card in today's world. Take some time to do that. You can see if they open it. You can see what happens. But it's got to be multi-channel. One of the biggest mistakes I've seen in follow-up is people just mindlessly, I mean, I'll, I'll read it and it'll just be call, 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 not no, not zero notes. And they can't figure out why people aren't buying with them. Got to be multi-channel, especially in this very noisy world when everybody's competing for their attention. Right? Very, very powerful. In that, in that scenario, which I think is super important. Fourth piece here, I have to have an increased touch. Yes, I need to increase my touches right now. Why? Because it's a crowded market space, less buyers, lots of agents, right? And there's an opportunity though for me to, so here's the thing. All these you're doing right now is separating yourself from everyone else in a very noisy category in a very noisy time. The better I get at leveling this skill set up here, right, and upskilling it, the better I'm gonna be at getting through the noise and having them work with me. And it's just a little bit extra that gets a massive difference on the back end. Does that make sense? If I can increase my conversion rate by 20, 30% in a crowded market, I'm gonna dominate and really make big passes in that passing lane. Okay, very, very important for me to understand that uh, to look at here. But I gotta increase my touch. What does that mean? Increase communication, increase the, the frequency in which I'm sending and touching them. It's very noisy right now. We're a very noisy thing, and so I want to be that very voice of certainty that's cutting through the noise, that's telling, hey, look, everything's going to be okay, I'm here for you. Everything's going to be okay, I'm here for you. Everything's going to be okay, I'm here for you. All of a sudden, as that noise kind of opens up a little bit, and they start to come out that tunnel, they're going to remember me being there over and over and over, be more loyal to me on the long term. It's all part of influence and persuasion and how those tools work to help me differentiate from anyone else. My goal of doing this is to truly just differentiate from anybody else out there. And really, the hungriest agent wins in that scenario. And, and guess what happens? They've been so used to doing the, 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 the status quo for so long in the tailwind in a frenzy. When the frenzy goes away, they still do what? The status quo. And that's how most agents get destroyed in any type of market shift. Our standard of 100 plus dollars a day happened, guess when? before the market ever became into a frenzy, which is why we're able to dominate at a very high level when the frenzy did come because we still were going above and, above, above and beyond the status quo. Does that make sense? But for you all, you have to understand that's gonna be a little difficult because it's not quite as easy as it was if you look at the overall status of the game and how easy it is to make lots of money in this business uh, by just making some phone calls and text messages and showing some properties. On the flip side, the seller side, calling them and going through that, right? This is a big one right here. The third piece of this is I've got to understand and be willing to, and it's hard for some of y'all, is change. What does that mean you think? And this change has to do with more than anything. Yeah, but this, uh, this is more relevant to right now the market. So the things that I was doing before and that I could get away with as an agent are no longer going to work sometimes when there's a market shift. Why is that? Because the status quo has changed, right? There's very, a lot more crowded in a marketplace that has less buyers. And so I want you guys to understand and have this mindset where I've got to, number one, lean into this change. Lean in. What do you mean by that when I put lean in there? Embrace the change. The hardest part, and the agents are going to lose the most in this whole shift, 
are going to be the ones that resist change the most. If I resist changing what's happening and just want to be stuck in what my patterns were before, my habits were before, I'm really going to lose big time because the way that buyers are buying is changing. The objections they had is changing, right? The way that you had offers versus multiple offers, all these things are changing. And so I've got to be able to lean in and really try to feel what's happening with buyers. If you notice, I look for patterns in phone calls, patterns in objections, patterns in conversations. And so I'm looking and say, hey, what's happening in terms of buyer mindset and how I can adjust what I'm saying, what I'm doing in a way that I can do what? Influence and persuade them at a much higher level. Second piece of this, and through this, number two thing, don't hide. There's two ways this is, I have this on here. Don't hide. What do you think that means? When it's not going through and you're not getting the results, like showing up. No matter what, I can't hide as an agent. I'm still plugged in. I'm still part of the team. I'm still here because as there's uncertainty and shifts or more objections I'm not used to, AK, I'm flying into a tailwind. In the beginning, it's going to be a little more difficult for me. But it's not that really difficult if you just stay plugged in. Second thing you do is don't hide from your clients. They have uncertainty. They're not sure what's going on. They really need you to lean on and be for there for them to help them make good decisions right now when there's that world of uncertainty. And I don't, I don't want to overreact. I don't want you guys to think I'm like, this is not gloom and doom at all. The only thing that's happened is the rates went up a little bit and now they're back down below 6%, right? So, I mean, it's not that, not that bad. But I'm just saying there is a change and there's a fear that's being projected out there from the, the news media and the news cycles. And that's something that's important for us to understand. Hey, look, I got to be willing to adjust to what these messages are that are programming their brains every single day. Because most consumers are obsessed with what? The news and the negativity and the addiction to that. And so we got to be able to fight that and me understand what they're going through so I can help persuade and influence them at a high level. The next part for this is you need to be the voice. Be the voice, not the echo. Be the voice, not the echo. What do you think that means? Right? Price can just level out. Uh, if anything, I know that what needs to happen is we had to have some deceleration of price increase. Any market that generates you know, a 50% almost year-over-year -year increase in prices like we had with condos last year is not sustainable. So I need to slow down and cool off a little bit so that buyers can still buy long term because what happens 12 months later is that no one can afford to buy here then you really got a major problem, right? And so I don't mind that happening a little bit and me being the true voice that says, hey, you know what? We're actually fine. We're just seeing price accelerate. The price acceleration just slowing down a little bit, right? Whatever it is or whatever the scenario is, my job is to be the voice, not the echo. It's very important though. What does that mean you think at a deeper level? The voice, not the echo. Yeah, here's the data based on our neighborhood. Here's a data based on the local Myrtle Beach area, not the news media telling you about Sacramento, right? I want to be their voice so that they can understand, hey, look, there is changes in the marketplace, but what we're finding actually is happening is X, Y, Z here in our local marketplace. And I want to be the one that truly does that so that they understand, hey, look, here's what's going on. Here's what the true voice is. And once I'm a true voice that's parroting real data, real things, then all of a sudden I'm the trusted voice they're going to to help guide them in this crowded marketplace that we're seeing. A good time for me to do that. Very important. This is also how to win through change right here, how to win this shifting market. Very, very, very important to do here in this, this scenario is I must nail the basics. Nail the basics. The biggest differentiator for any agent going forward in this is who can nail the basics the most. What's that going to be? Time management, phone calls, follow-up, consistent follow-up, multi-channel follow-up, sticking to the script, following the script. I can't come here, and I'll put my words here too in parentheses, don't wing it, which is a great point. Stick to the script. If I listen to probably, if I listen to seven Google calls, let's say I listen to 10 Google calls that come in, guess what? Seven of them are not on script at all. It's absolutely horrendous. Not even close, right? Listen to a lot of the other type of calls that come in. Not even close, right? Nailing the basics and not winging it is how you win the game. Why? Because we understand this is a psychological process and how people buy. All these processes and basics that we have have been designed around that box of how people think. And so if I come in and just wing it, 
thinking it's going to make a difference is not. And so I got to make sure that I nail the basics through change because as I do that, that allows me to understand what's really changing. Fourth piece, last one I think is going to make or break it for agents in this whole process and any market shift to make sure that we can dominate and continue to dominate is going to come down to habits. Why do you think I put that in here? I watched a lot of great agents who would absolutely dominate this, this business. They can't stick to any habits for longer than a week or two weeks. They can't even make five days in a row in office at any time. Why? Because it always goes back to that freedom. The freedom that we have, right? the freedom to make sure that I can go and dominate. But even here, right? Tuesday meeting. Do I make sure I have the habits to not miss Tuesday meetings, right? Whatever it is, Thursday meetings, the morning huddles. Those are habits that make or break it because here's the thing. I must maintain consistency through any chaos. I just put maintain consistency in any chaos. I'm not saying we're going to have chaos, but let's say that there was chaos. I'm going to maintain my consistency to win it. And so if we just have a struggle or a little bit of a slowdown, which is not that big a deal, and personally, Mike, right now, I feel like it's not that big a deal. I think you do just have to level up a little bit because if you look at mathematics and you have less sales, same amount of agents, I've got to find a way to differentiate that much more. Well, in a way, it's just like we talked about before. Hey, look, there's just less sales, 13% less sales. That means I've got to increase my output by what? 18%. At least 13% to make sure I maintain the same amount of deals I had before. And the problem is, and here's why I'm teaching this today, the problem is some of y'all have felt like you were up in it, but you really weren't because you weren't doing the effective and efficient things that really make or break the difference. And one of those is embracing the change in this, but here's the thing, maintain consistency. But here's, if I can't maintain it, and this is not to you guys because you guys are here and you guys are doing the thing, but here's the point about agents. If they can't maintain consistency and be able to make it five days a week to the office, and be at Tuesdays and Thursday meetings, there's no way they're going to win at a big level in a market shift. Period. Why? Because the cost of entry, right, to get there is going to be the basics of maintaining consistency. And that's what I need as a, as a human, as a salesperson, as I have this thing of war going on around me, is that main consistency allowed me to make sure I'm very, very dialed in. And no matter what happens in the outside, I keep doing what? Showing up. Showing up. Showing up. And then what happens eventually is my consistency wins any inconsistency in the market. Say it again. My consistency beats or wins against any inconsistency in the marketplace. And so that's a secret weapon for anybody in any business. They just keep showing up and doing it. Show up and doing it so all of a sudden they're very successful. Can't figure out why. Right? Very, very important piece there in that. Second thing here. I must be very, very intentional about my habits. What does that mean, you think? Very intentional about my habits. I need you guys to be very hyper aware of what your habits are right now. What have your habits been? What's been going on? There's two things with this, right? Number one, will be habits that aren't working for you. What bad habits you have right now? For many people, that's going to be what? Time management, consistency. Allowing distractions to get them out their game. Allowing things to come up in their life affect them at work. Whatever it is. What type of inconveniences are keeping me from making the huddles? Right? The, the trainings. Whatever it is. My dials. There's got to be a thing that I'm looking at. Hey, what habits for me are not working? Where am I letting myself off the hook that I need to make sure I can correct that habit? Because here's the deal. Bad habits hurt us very, very bad sometimes. Myself included. Certain things, Right? But also, the good habits can help us. And so the second piece of that is I need to be hyper aware or very intentional about my habits that are working. Right? What's working for me? Then what I want to do? Well, if they're working for me, what I want to do? Right? I wrote here, what's working and anchor those in. Be very intentional about what's working and anchor those in because here's the thing. What most people do too is once they see change, they end up getting in a place of chaos and they end up changing all their habits thinking it's going to fix the problem. 
but I want to understand what are my good habits that I continue doing that help me thrive. What could that be an example of? Making my dial the same time every day, right? Making my follow-up call the same time every day. Checking my nows who are coming in, right? Who are looking at that. Checking in our other portal if we have those. Doing my email follow-ups, answering my questions, looking at the market. Whatever those are, those are good habits that I want to make sure that I have and establish because that's what helps me continue to dominate through any change. But I put this in here for you all for one reason. Uh, was what my, my thought, my why behind it, was I want you to be very intentional in understanding what your habits look like. What's my huddle attendance look like? That's the number one thing for anybody that I think is, is the most eye-opening is looking at what a huddle attendance is, right? In terms of, hey, look, here's my habits. And what they don't realize, they hey, look, I'm like 95, 100%, but actually it's 70%. And there's 20% left on the table you're not even remembering that. You don't really feel it's costing you, but it's costing you a lot, right? And so I think it's very, very important for us to look and understand that, that I really wanna make sure I'm digging into that piece overall, which I think is important. And one of the things I wrote down too that we have is a quote I got from one of my coaches. So reflection is one of the most underused yet powerful tools for success. Reflection is one of the most underused but powerful tools for success. And so I really kind of thought through this process here of like how's an agent internally continue to dominate this market and really take advantage of that passing lane, what's going on. And I want you guys to do one thing too is look down in a circle or make a note here. What's well, the number one skill set I really need to make sure I level up for this next quarter? The next three months to six months, what's the number one skill set I need to make sure I level up for next quarter, which is super important? Second thing here, what habits do I need to make sure? What's my number one habit I need to eliminate? What's my number one habit I make sure I'm going to stick to no matter what happens this quarter? But I want us to look at this as a massive opportunity when the masses and talking to somebody else who they're trying to scramble to figure out what they're, what's going on and they realize, hey, look, we've just been order takers for the past two years. How do I level up and dominate and capture that market share that they're letting go because they're just going through the motions and staying at the status quo? Does that make sense? There's massive, massive opportunity. And here's the thing. The buyers and sellers, guess what they're going on? 20 different websites, talking to 20 different agents. And so if I'm the one that can cut through that noise and dominate, I'm gonna be the one they stick with, the one they really go through the most. And so I want us just to have the next three to six months, our goal is how do I have the people who are talking to multiple people wanna stick with me and go with me the most? And the first step of that is realizing, hey look, they're talking to multiple people right now. And so how can I differentiate myself in every level? That come down to the quality of your signature. Do I have a photo set up on my Google? Do I have a photo set up on my, my you know, the system we use on the back end, right, that you're sending to them? All these details matter so that I can do what? Differentiate myself to them and have them want to stick with me overall.